Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, I'm Abdurrahman Idlibi from MIT Scratch team. There are lots of conversations today about what technologies to use to encourage creative learning experiences, whether we're talking about programs, apps, or devices. But is asking what technologies to use is the most important question in the first place? Being from the Scratch team, I'll start by sharing a few lessons we learned from Scratch about learning and motivation. So for those who don't know what Scratch is, Scratch is a programming language with which you can create your own animations, games, interactive stories, simulations, art, and music. So to create with Scratch, um, you go to Scratch website and start building a project by um, snapping programmable blocks together, just like Lego bricks, and then experimenting with them and your ideas to see what happens. And then you can, of course, share your creations and projects with others on the on Scratch website. So Scratch is not only the programming language, it's also the online community where people can support, collaborate, critique one another's work, and build on it. We have about 7 million projects since on Scratch website since it was launched in 2007. Actually, every day there are like more than 10,000 projects created by kids of all ages shared on that website. So we thought, okay, maybe we should ask the kids themselves what was motivating them to create with Scratch. So we created a studio asking the kids to respond to the question, why do you Scratch? And look at the responses. And from these responses, I'll be sharing the five key uh, motivators we learned. So the kids were motivated to create projects that were meaningful to them, following their own interests and passions. They were also motivated to connect with other scratchers who appreciated what they were working on. The kids were also motivated to share their projects, to share their creations, and share their self-expressions with that community. And they were also motivated to learn new things, whether that was coding itself, whether it was animations, whether it was things related to storytelling and game design, and they were certainly having fun. And just like to give you a glimpse of what the kids were saying, actually, I'll, I'll quote uh, one of the responses, and this was specifically about the community aspect. So this kid said, first, Scratch is a community. Everyone appreciates and celebrates each other's work. If someone says something hurtful, everyone stands up for the person who had been put down. We also welcome new scratchers, and eventually, who knows, they could become the best programmer ever. I know this is not really a smooth transition now, but this is how life goes sometimes. So being on Scratch team um, and working on the design of learning experiences, some friends contacted me to help with a project that was trying to address some of the educational needs facing Syrian refugee kids. I'm Syrian myself but I didn't have a first-hand experience of what those kids were going through or their community or you know, the whole war thing or even like staying at the refugee camp. So I wanted to go and spend some time with them to learn more about that community. So I visited a village called Qah in northern Syria, just near the border with Turkey, and it had then in uh, January 2013, it had a camp that hosted more than 5,000 displaced Syrians. It was like very different from MIT where I worked. There was no uh, constant water supply. There was no heating because there was no fuel. And there was definitely no electricity, so new technologies could hardly be used. But I was still able to do like a lot of things with the little I had, mainly my laptop, my camera, and lots of pencils, crayons, and paper. So I wanted to hear from the kids. This is why, why I was there in the first place. So I set up my activities at the mosque and invited the kids to come and tell their stories because I wanted to learn about the kids, their community, and what would motivate them in such extreme conditions. Those kids had been out of school for more than a year then. They hadn't even seen paper or pencils for a long time, mainly because anything that they could burn was used for heating. And many of them would just say they didn't rem you know, remember how to read or write. We used the mosque, actually, because we were looking for a space that was like respectful and where kids could share their stories safely. And in Islamic tradition, we say that a mosque is a house of God. So no one owns it, but it belongs to everyone. 
So kids could come and share, and they even learn to, you know, how to respond to objecting adults saying, okay, this is a house of God, you cannot ask me to leave. Um, and also the place provided this kind of moral environment where kids thought, okay, we should be like interacting respectfully with each other. So I started, because I wanted to hear from the kids and do something to do with them, I started mainly with drawing and writing. And the kids liked, liked drawing. So I started with a few, and then they started inviting their friends, and very soon we had many kids, simply because they were invited, or just like someone would come, because this was everyone's place, would come and see what was happening. They'd like it, and they'd say, okay, we want to be part of this. So the kids will just start drawing, and I'd ask them, okay, describe this drawing for me. Well, what's the story behind it? And many of them just draw a scene from nature or from the villages where they came from, while others would actually draw things about actual events they witnessed, including battles and bombings. The next step was like introducing some writing, because I wanted them to practice some, knowing that they've been away from that setting for a long time. So I just like asked them to write on the drawing itself what was happening there. But many kids were struggling with the writing, because you know, they hadn't practiced for a long time. And this is a drawing of a nine-year-old girl who came to me saying, OK, I cannot really write. So we went slowly through the process of spelling, writing down separate letters, as those who recognize Arabic can see and then connecting letters together because Arabic is written in cursive. And it's interesting to, to think about what was motivating that little girl to go through all that struggle and persist, just like uh, the rest of her peers. This wasn't a school. I mean, the kids, when they told their parents what was going on, they wouldn't say even that they were doing writing. They'd say, OK, we're having fun, we're drawing, that's it. Um, they were not promised degrees, no certificates, and definitely no brighter future for, from my side. They couldn't even keep the tools they were using. So they were only going there because, you know, they liked what they were doing in a way. So they'd come every day in the morning, wake me up, so they, can, they could start their, the activity. And then stay till it's dark, just like it crammed next to the tiny windows to get like the little light coming in. So the next step, actually, because we wanted to add more expressiveness to the stories that were happening, uh, we started creating sequences of events in time. So this is a kid just like telling a story that was, you know, her story, actually. So it's, she's saying that an airplane came and bombed the house. Then they moved to the shelter, so it was bombed also. Then they moved to, to their aunt's house, and then they moved to the camp. And it was amazing to see how those kids were like sharing stories that were meaningful to them, and the community as a whole, telling stories about you know, themselves in the present and the past. And they were not sharing these stories only with me. They were sharing them with their peers, directly or indirectly. Um, so it, it was funny just like to see how, how some themes would start trending among the kids because they'd see like their friends writing or drawing about something and then everyone would follow. But actually it was more interesting to see how adults got hooked into that sharing process because they were like, okay, we didn't know that about our kids. And they wanted to be part of it to understand how those kids actually perceived what was going on around them. And that motivated some of the adults to come and say, okay, I want to volunteer to help with some of the activities, or they would come with their own activities actually to share. Although they didn't even think before that about themselves as mentors or teachers. So when I look back at what was happening at the camp, I cannot but help you know, thinking that this is what was motivating these kids, it was just like what we see in kids using Scratch and creating with Scratch. All these kids were motivated to create following themes they cared about. They were motivated to connect with other people in their community of creators. They were motivated to share their stories with those people in the community. They were motivated about new things they could use to express themselves in better ways. And they were also having fun. I always remember a conversation with my mentor, Mitch Resnick, when I came to him asking what more advanced tools I could use in my future trips to the camps. And he, he was like, he responded saying that I shouldn't worry about what medium I'd be using. I should focus on how I'd be using that medium, whether it was a crayon or a laptop. And again, in many of our conversations we, regarding education, we always talk about, okay, what 
technology can, you know, what role technology can play in improving the learning experiences of the kids. And I, I agree that technology has like a great potential actually to have these creative learning experiences, but that won't happen automatically because the main problem is not about what kind of tools we're using, it's about how we're using them. Are we using them to motivate the kids to create, connect, share, learn, and having fun or not? So again, it's not about the medium, it's about how we use it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.